officially going live. Hey guys, welcome to this awesome special webinar broadcast that we've got going on today. My name is Andy the Gun Guy. Uh, today we have uh, some really great guests that I have been looking forward to doing uh, a live stream with for quite some time. Uh, and uh, so today we've got uh, Chris Sutton, the CEO of Cobra Defense, and Mark McKay, the COO of Cobra Defense. Welcome, guys. Good to see you. Hey, how you doing? Andy, thank you for having us. Hi, um, guys, a little bit about my background. Uh, once again, thank you for having me as a, a guest speaker. Uh, I am a, a dual certified law enforcement officer, which means I was a corrections officer first. I was working in maximum security inside of the, uh, the Pinellas County Jail. And then I transferred to patrol operations and I worked as a street cop for not only a county, so a deputy sheriff for a county in uh, Pinellas County and uh, the city of Largo. So I've worked for municipalities and the county uh, as a sheriff and in maximum security dealing with criminals uh, on a daily, <laughs> weekly and monthly um, uh, basis. Also started a martial arts school in 2002 in uh, Clearwater, Florida. Uh, we went for 18 years until we sold it. And, and just all we do now is, is work with the uh, international business, Cobra International. We train clients like Royal Caribbean, Verizon, US government, uh, Department of Forestry. Uh, and they take all of our courses such as active shooter, bully response plan, anti-abduction training and reality-based self-defense. So that's what we specialize in. And, um, Today, we're going to talk about our self-defense college, which houses a lot of this intellectual material, material that we took from our training experience working with criminals on a daily basis. So in self-defense, when you get someone ready for self-defense, you're getting them ready for a violent criminal encounter or to avoid it altogether. There's no, it's not a sport. You don't get your hand raised. There's no trophies. You get to survive the situation. Uh, so we'll talk about that in depth, give you some pointers, psychologically speaking and physically and talk about the online college. Thanks, Andy. Awesome, awesome. And Mark, why don't you give us your background as well? Hi, Mark McKay, COO. Uh, I'm an Army veteran. Uh, I'm a lifelong martial artist. I've been involved with Cobra for the past six years plus now. And uh, it's my job. We just we just lost you, Mark. Uh, I think I think something uh, somebody muted you. you. Go ahead, go ahead, unmute, Chris. I think he's coming through you. Okay, go ahead. I am muted, Mark. Go ahead. Oh, I don't know where we were, but uh, I'm a decorated Army veteran, uh, a gun enthusiast. I am also uh, in charge of hire, fire, train, troubleshoot new locations for Cobra Defense International. I'm in charge of sales of our entire suite of products. And it's my pleasure to be with you guys today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So guys, we've got about 55 viewers watching this. Guys, if you if you watching at home have any questions, feel free to comment. Let us know what your questions are. I'm watching those comments as they come in. Um, but today's goal is, is really to talk about the three defensive fundamentals for hands-on self-defense, right? We're taking the gun out of the equation right now uh, and assuming that maybe you're somewhere uh, where you don't have access to your pistol. Maybe it's illegal for you to bring your pistol there uh, or, you know, for, for some other reason, you, you don't have it with you. Uh, I'm a big, obviously, supporter of getting armed, getting trained, and carrying daily. But uh, if you don't have your pistol with you, that's where a lot of the training from Cobra Defense comes in. So we're going to be going over, uh, number one, what advantage a criminal does have. Number two, we're going to talk about myth busting and all the things that people think is going to work in a self-defense situation, but will not. And we're going to be going over the the most uh, that that most self defense is invisible and this is a really uh, important cycle psychological effect uh, of the self defense world i can't wait to get into that um but i want you guys at home to know that anybody can do this you don't need experience uh and we'll be going over as uh as chris is teaching today we'll actually have an opportunity really to share uh, to share the the Cobra Self Defense College here, um, where you know I'll be I'll be going through and pointing out different uh, you know different videos. They their their Self Defense College has over a thousand videos in it uh, to get you prepared for that hands on situation. And I'll be able to go through uh, a quite quite a bit of that content here. But Chris, we're going to start out here, you know, talking about what advantage does a criminal have in the self defense world? Tell us about that. What. Andy, every, every criminal, now dealing with criminals uh, you know, as a profession, 
uh, every criminal has an advantage over every single person, even a police officer. Now, in my seminars, when I ask this question, most people cannot answer what that that secret formula that every criminal has over us. Uh, some some people might jump up and say, surprise, the element of surprise. Well, if if you really want to know what it is and you really want to break it down so you can control it, it's TPM. They control the time, place, and method of attack, always. So you're coming home at four o'clock, okay? Time is four o'clock, place is your house, method of attack, you might be in a domestic situation and you might use empty hands. The criminal might think I'm gonna stab her uh, or I'm gonna use my gun. So they control time, place, and method. Now you can control your time and place and it optimizes your safety. So visualize this, you're leaving Walmart at three in the afternoon. There's tons of traffic, tons of people. It's on a Monday, the sun is up, everything's well lit. Criminals. It's easy to become a criminal. It's really hard to get away with it. And that's that's how they focus uh, what they do. Can I get away with this? Is this an easy opportunity? So if I'm leaving Walmart at three, it's relatively safe. There's a green light. You should have a mental green light. This is good. Okay, I can walk out. There's there's witnesses. I can see my car. I'm not jingling my keys. I'm not, you know, I'm not acting like a soft target, but there's a lot of people, a lot of traffic. Now I'm leaving Walmart. 10 at night. I'm just getting off the night shift. I'm parked on the other side of the parking lot. Uh, it's not well lit. And all of a sudden, now you're at that yellow. Okay. That yellow light means make, you got to make a decision, a better decision. Red light means we got to take action. Now you make it worse if you're jingling your keys, looking at your phone. So you're a soft target to an extent, but then you're also a softer target when you take certain actions where the criminal, like a lion hunting, says, this is the one. So they control time, place, and method always. Even even when you see law enforcement officers getting ambushed in their own patrol car, that guy said, oh, right now, I'm going to walk up with this gun and shoot that officer as he sits there. It doesn't matter if you have a badge. It doesn't matter if you have a black belt. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are. They control the initial time, place, and method of attack. That's what makes them so vicious, and that's what makes them criminals and not uh, athletes competing in a sport. I, I love that. And I'm just going to share my screen because I'm on a section of the self-defense college here um, that I think, you know, serves us as, as a good point. Types of bad guys. Chris, would you say that learning about uh, criminal intent, levels of force, recognize, you know, threat recognition, would you say that that's a fundamental characteristic of somebody who wants to be defensive, somebody that wants to defend their lives? It's huge. It's huge. What, what we do is we put people in certain scenarios and you'll see them uh, on the online training where we're, we're doing a, a mock robbery and all we're doing is asking for property, intent, property. So there's a lot of different intents. Intent is why the criminal is committing the crime in the first place. If it was murder, you wouldn't hear about it. They would just shoot you. Most crime is property, uh, perversion, domestic. So if I point a gun at you in training, okay, and we're, we're doing a scenario and, uh, and I said, give me your watch and your wallet. And, and we allowed you to have a gun on you as a concealed carry, or maybe you, maybe you chose a knife or whatever, um, and you chose to pick um, to take that gun out and shoot me over property, that would be the wrong decision. So we teach people, hey, listen, even myself, if you want my, my citizen watch and you want my wallet, you can have it because I'm going to get a description of you, you're going to get caught, and, it, and it's not worth dying over. There's a certain, there's a certain level where you have to go hands-on. Um, someone trying to stuff you in a car, someone trying to push you back in your house, turn around, get on your knees. And, and, and that might be, it might be an execution. You don't know, but never die over your watch or your wallet. So yeah, it's, it's, it's incredibly important to know the fundamentals of, of protecting yourself. Wow. Fascinating. Fascinating. So let's talk about some myths that, you know, a lot of people are going to think, you know, will work in a self-defense scenario. And again, uh, for those of you watching, we are joined right now with the CEO and the COO of, uh, of Cobra Defense Training. Uh, this is a fascinating conversation about self-defense. And we're imagining that for some reason we don't have our firearm with us. Although most of us uh, that are watching these videos do carry daily. This is a scenario where we weren't allowed to carry this day uh, or for some other reason we don't have our pistol with us. Um, that's when you know these tools uh, take effect. So go ahead, Chris, talk about some myths uh, that people think are gonna work in the self-defense world, but you know for sure are not going to. One of the uh, one of the first scenarios we, we give people is we take a person from the audience and we ask them how many feet do you need to get your phone out dial nine one one describe what I look like and and rattle off the address and in our training with people all over the world not our own instructors this is organic uh, people will say ten feet fifteen feet a hundred feet uh, life do doesn't happen at a thousand feet life happens in inside of rooms hallways conveyances vehicles 
uh, and coming and going from, from those types of uh, venues. So generally it's 20 to 30 feet people ask for. We give them uh, about 40, they can't get their phone out. They can't get their phone out of a bag that has nothing in it but the phone. They, they don't dial 911 correctly. They're hitting all kinds of numbers um, and they forget their own address because when you infuse nerves into fine motor skills, everything goes, um, goes in the basket, goes in the wastebasket until you get used to that. So your cell phone's not gonna save you. You're gonna save you. You're your own first responder. So uh, if you can't get a cell phone out of the bag, can't get the pepper spray out of the bag either. It's smaller, it's, it's the bottom of the bag. Also, pepper spray doesn't work like you think it does. I, I've been uh, exposed to pepper spray, which is cayenne pepper, uh, an oil, so it sticks in a, a propellant, so it, it moves through the air. I've been exposed over 50 times, and most officers have. It's just part of the job. It's part of the training. They expose you to that. They hit you with taser so you know what it feels like. So you can't hide behind all these things that you think you're gonna, uh, are going to protect you uh, unless you're really good at them and understand the limitations of them. So you can't get your cell phone out. You can't get your pepper spray out that's buried at the bottom of your purse or your bag. Then you got to open it up, spin it, and make sure you hit this person. And a lot of criminals have been exposed to it and they can function just fine. I know from personal experience, I sprayed a guy for at least three seconds right in the face and he took off dodging traffic. So he could see. So we, we give them tools like why don't you put out 409 or Tylex or something that's a lot more lethal that doesn't look like a weapon that works 100% every single time. We also get keys between the fingers. I would just put, my, so a lot of people, we, we say training saves lives. As a, as a former officer, I remember finding children that had passed away. I mean, you know, they, they, they find a pool, they don't have training and 100% of the time, if they fall in the water without training, they die. So training would have saved that child. So if you don't have training at one or five or 55 years old, you never have it. So a lot of people will have all these things they build around them, a baby gate, sensors, a camera, the personal promise that I'll never take my eyes off that child. And they die a silent death because that's what drowning is all about. Um, but if you just train them. So instead of having the baby gate, which means the pepper spray, the sensor, which means I've got keys between the fingers. None of that works. None of that works. Okay. We test it here at the headquarters. We've been around a long time. Um, this stuff, these are facts. These aren't opinions. Uh, so look a man, always look a man in the, so this is one of those myths in self-defense. You know, you're growing up, maybe your dad tells you this, you know, when you're going to be confronted by a guy, always look him where? In the eyes, right? Most people are finishing my sentence. No, never look someone directly in the eye because you'll lose your peripheral vision. Because what hurts people? Not eyeballs hands, elbows, the introduction of a weapon. Uh, you want to profile. How's a person standing? Where would he have a weapon if he has one on him? What's his dominant hand? Is he wearing a watch or a ring on his left? His right hand is probably dominant, so you would profile the side of his body in case he's carrying a weapon. So you don't want to lose your peripheral vision. You don't want to be looking through a straw. So that's another myth. Keys between the fingers. Um, here's, a, here's another one. I'll, a lot of females say, I would punch you with my ring. Well, if you, have you ever punched anyone in anger? If you have it, now's not the time to, to uh, you know, figure out if that's going to work or not. We tell people, if you have a ring that has a base on it about this, I just spin it in. Now it's a, it's a weapon that gross motor skills can use. You can put that on someone's forehead and rake down, which is a lot easier than punching someone, and you get DNA stuck in it. So there's a lot of myths out there, and we don't want people walking around thinking that, here's a, for instance, real estate agents. I don't need self-defense. I have an app on my phone. What does that do? What does your app do? Well, it takes a panoramic picture of everything in front of me and uh, send, sends a message to 911. So they see everything and the police are on the way. And I always tell them, well, now you have nine to 11 minutes with, with this individual because that's the average response time for law enforcement in the, in the United States, or it was at least last year. But nine to 11 minutes with someone with bad intentions is not good. So the app doesn't save you. The cell phone's not going to save you. Uh, you know, putting your 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 uh, keys between your fingers to fight not going to save you. But then we show you what does work. Sorry, I was looking for my unmute button. I I think it's fascinating that you leave us on that cliffhanger. Of we're going to show you what does work. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. This is something that Mark and I were. Uh, we're talking about uh, prior to this call, we were just going through the self-defense college here. Um, and, you know, we came, you know, he pulled, he pulled up this video as an example. Mark, this video is, is a minute and 23 seconds. Do you mind if I just play this as an example for what you're talking about? Absolutely. I'm going to because that's where my screen is. So you go right ahead. All right. I'm going to, I'm just going to hit play and uh, 
Is the sound coming through here? Let's see. Down. Your hands are down. We did this earlier. Hand position. Hands down. Your hands are down. You can take whatever stance you want with your feet. My hands are up. Here's the drill. I'm going to try to touch this and come back. When you see me move, just try to intercept and swap my hand. Any questions? Did I get there? And I got back, okay? Now keeping your head in place. Keeping your head in place. Because you moved your head and I still got it. Now bring your hands to here. About that, that belt right there. My hands are up. Keep your head in place. Try to intercept. Did I touch it? Yes. I still touched it. That means if I wanted to hit him, I would have made contact with the nose. Bang. And you know what's coming. Now, move it away. Create that passive stance, a little hands out, right here. Called interview stance. Go ahead and touch your fingers together. That's it. Trying to touch, ready? One, two. That's it, see the intercept? Now, unannounced, you're in a good position. Now, get out of that rigid position. Just go to a natural position. Is he there? Yes, he's starting to intercept. Now, I'm telling him I'm coming, but even a trained black belt, a martial artist, gets hit in the face when their hands are anywhere down here. That's action versus reaction. Guns out, guns away. Guns out, guns away. Guns out, guns away. Go ahead and put it up. Remember how to pause yet? I mean, what a fascinating uh, experience just looking at that video. I mean, you know, you've taken the, the, the typical kind of martial arts where maybe they're, you know, they've got their hands out here or they're kind of up like this to just a natural, you know, just, you know, you're kind of just hanging out naturally. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about, about what people are going to find on the self-defense college along those lines and, and some of those tips that we just saw. I mean, I thought that was extraordinary. Well, we're going to build your skill set like, like a house. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of training out there that they don't start with foundation at all. They say, get on the mat, we're gonna learn to kick and punch. Um, kicking and punching is the easiest thing to do. You can take someone that doesn't even speak your language and, and, and if you tell them in, in their language, punch my hand, they'll do it. Even if they have very little training. So we start with, you can see right here, orientation, psychology. We want your mindset right. What works, what doesn't. Uh, AAA, the awareness, alarm, and action. That's, that's the threat letter. Uh, threat, letter. threat recognition. Uh, what's a soft target? How, how do you define that? Well, how do the criminals hunt? What are the three types of criminals? So once your mind is right, we'll put you, we'll put you on a good foundation as far as your stance. You're right. As a police officer, I couldn't sit there with my, my fist clenched trying to interview someone. Sir, can I have your license, please? This makes people feel very combative. So you have to hide your actual intention. So we have that, that stance you just saw, we built his stance and made it look very natural. This was my stance as an officer. Both of my hands are above my elbow. My, my weight is slightly shifted, okay? And I can sit here, I can fiddle with things. I can look at my watch, but I can access a weapon in two, just half a second, okay? When you saw him with his hands down, we call that the Christmas stance because it's always a gift if you want to hit someone. Is my hands, my palms are below my waist. The other person always wins, always wins. And we do a, we do an example in our, in our training seminars where we have people close their eyes six inches apart with their hands. And as soon as, you know, when they hear a clap, they need to clap. Then I have them open their eyes, use all their senses. Even if you see me move, okay, I want you to try to beat my clap and they never can. And I can't beat theirs. Uh, it goes back to the old days when you're racing in the schoolyard and you, you're you the one that says go. I'm like, okay, ready, one, two, three, go. You're always winning in the beginning. So that demonstrated if my hands are up and if I decide to move first, I will always hit you first. Always hit you first if your hands are down. Um, and that goes, same thing with a weapon. In law enforcement, the old days was keep your, um, we do a, a demo called suicidal subject. And we allow a student to be a police officer and they put their gun in the holster and I tell them to talk me off the cliff. I've had a bad day. All right. And they're starting to talk to me. And I take my gun and I go from here to here. Bang. I win 100% of the time because from here to here is, is a lot easier than going for the weapon and gig. Now, now policy mandates you have your gun out if there's another person with a gun because you're just not as fast as you think you are. Uh, so showing people that really breaks down a lot of barriers. They're like, I get it. That was not rehearsed or staged. And it 100% happens the same way every single time. So when, you, when we take away the things you shouldn't be focused on, it allows you uh, to focus forward. We, we just had a class um, and you know, we're talking about trigger control and side alignment and anyone can pull a trigger. A I've seen a five-year-old pull a trigger. That's just a fundamental gross motor skill. 
but to actually be able to aim and be effective with the weapon, completely different. There's a lot of skills involved in that, and that's what we're really focused on. So we want to build your mind, we want to build your stance, and we also want to give you some serious weapons um, uh, to, to hurt somebody. You have to be, it's called self, uh, being self-offered. You know, you, you, you need defensive weapons, uh, whether you have a gun or not. Block directions, escapes, uh, you know, so even even bear hug escapes or uh, headlock escapes here, wrist escapes. Um, I, I, you know, we were doing some firearm defense stuff. What, what are we going to find under the firearm defense category? Is there a way we can, you know, defend ourselves with our hands uh, against a firearm? Yeah. So the, the demonstration, the demonstration I just did, um, you might want to do firearm defense point blank under chin. All right. So if you open that one up, it is show him tr uh, trying to shoot me when I move and he just can't do it. It's a long video, so I don't, well, I don't know how long it is. I'll just, I'll just skip forward a little bit. Laser rule, the barrel moves away from my face. I don't move my face away from the barrel. And then that action versus reaction concept. If I move first, I win. We do this live and that gun goes click and he, he can never shoot me, ever. And that's not because I'm something special. That's just like the law of gravity. It does not change. All right. So what we're doing now is is um, controlling and anchoring the weapon. You might see a lot of systems and styles that want to grab a weapon and punch with the other hand. I think that's reckless and dangerous to separate all that force. This is an arm situation. What, what you're watching. All right. It's clear anchor and extract. So watch clear the weapon it has to clear anchored it has to be anchored to my body. And then I need to extract the weapon, making sure that that barrel never, never crosses my body. And we talk about the laser rule. If there's a laser pointing out at the end of the gun all the way to the moon, anything in front of it is dead. So when you're um, anchoring a weapon, whether it's edge weapon or firearm, the most important thing is to control the weapon. Don't think about punching and kicking because uh, until it's an unarmed situation, um, it's 100% armed. It's deadly. At this point, it's deadly, deadly force. Wow. Fascinating. Fascinating. I think we're learning a lot here. Um, I, that, that brings me down to um, the, the one that really interests me the most um, is... You know, you've got a, you've got a phrase, Chris, that you talk about how uh, most self defense is an invisible uh, invisible defense. Tell me a little bit about that. So it's hard for people to wrap their head around that, but if you just think of this now, when I was a patrol officer uh, in my downtime, where I'm doing reports or, or I have to take a call or whatever, I, it, and everyone has experienced this. You're driving, and you all of a sudden, sudden you see the the light bar of a patrol car. We all become the best driver in the world, right? Like uh, hands ten and two, seat belts on. You might have prevented something really bad from happening to me, the driver. My patrol car sitting in the median, I don't know how many people slowed down, didn't run a red light. I don't, I don't know how many alcoholics didn't leave the bar and stumble across the road because they saw my patrol car. I go, oh, I'm going to call an Uber now. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stumble across the road in front of that cop. So if you locked your door at night, you don't know that you didn't get robbed because there's a cat burglar turning 200 knobs a night. Yours was locked. Once again, they don't want to get caught. They don't want to have to smash the glass knowing that you possibly are home. The one that's open, they go in. Uh, you don't know that because your laptop was sitting on your, your passenger side that it didn't get stolen because you locked your car and the guy was going through the mall parking lot flipping handles. You don't know that you didn't get attacked at leaving Chili's one night uh, because there was a guy in a car waiting for you to leave. He's kind of a Facebook stalker, but you never looked down at your phone. You weren't texting. You didn't care about your likes. You weren't jingling your keys. They were already out. You had your shoulders up, your eyes were at 10 and 2 as you walked out, and you left. You locked and relocated, which is one of our small protocols to keep people safe. Don't get in your car and start checking your phone. Don't park your car before you get out and start checking your phone. Lock and relocate. You don't know you weren't attacked because it never happened. So like a lion that hunts, the lion wants the gazelle that's drinking water or, you know, as a person that's in their Facebook uh, position. They want the older of the pack, the one that they think that they can take down, the, the handicapped one, all these soft targets we talk about, the one that's not paying attention, the one with little kids. Easier, easier to get. A lion will never pass up one gazelle for another one. If they get it, they get it. Okay, it's food. And it, criminals think the same way. And you got to remember one thing I, I want to impart to people criminals are criminals 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not, I did something wrong and I got in trouble one time. They were all out of bed going, I need $100 because I ran out of crack or heroin. That means I got to go rob someone. So I'm going to go to that mall, start opening handles, and I'll go pawn that. And then I'm going to steal a car to go down to the, the next city for one of my, my drug contacts. All the time they're thinking about crime. Adversely, the average 
person with a job and, and doing the right thing, uh, obeying the laws, we don't roll out of bed going, you know what, what can I do to become a safer individual? I should go get that concealed carry and learn how to carry my, my weapon appropriately. I, I should take a self-defense class. I should install cameras around my house. These are things I should do. We don't do that until things happen to us for the most part. A lot of people are proactive. A lot of people aren't. But self-defense is invisible means when your head's up and you don't get selected, you don't know it didn't happen because it never happened. But you're always shedding the lion. You're always shedding. You're, that, that scopes on you every once in a while, and then they move it to a different target because that guy does he looks prepared now i'll give you i'll give you one more example they they interviewed a killer um and this killer he killed a cop and he was pulled over by one officer and he and for some reason he didn't register in the national system or whatever for for his crime and the guy got but there was a gun right next to him and he got pulled over again and he killed that cop and when they asked him why did you why didn't you kill the first cop he said i don't i didn't think i could take him his uniform was starched, everything was shiny. In law enforcement, they show you how to weaponize your uniform. When you look like you just stepped out of a statue, that criminal gets a little softer mentally. I don't think I can take him, so I'm not even gonna try. The second cop was extremely overweight, shirt was, and he described it. He just didn't look like he had it together. His shirt was disheveled and wrinkled. He kept taking his eye off of the car. And the guy got the gun and killed him and took off. He got caught later, but an officer died. So appearances and, and perception, they go a long way. That's fascinating. You know, the idea that, you know, we're not getting robbed because we lock our door, right? Um, we don't know if somebody came up and jiggled or, uh, you know, unless we have those, you know, the, the, the doorbell, um, you know, cameras or whatever. But in theory, you know, it, it goes further than just, you know, pulling the doorbell or trying to open the car door. It's that we don't know how many times we've prevented an attack simply by being alert, simply by having our stuff together. Um, you know, uh, you know, the, these things that we can do in the everyday, maybe, you know, where we sit in the restaurant. I mean, everything kind of matters on that. Um, so I, I love that, that fascinating point that, um, that self-defense, you know, a lot, a lot of the times is invisible because you don't know how many times that you were not attacked. Right. Um, I think that that's, that's a fascinating point. So, um, so, you know, for those of you who are watching this, uh, this webinar and watching this training, um, I do want you to use the link below this video to, uh, jump in and, and sign up with the self-defense college. It is absolutely worth, uh, your time, absolutely worth, uh, your money. There's thousands of, offensive defenses psychological uh issues on self-defense i mean this this resource uh if you're serious enough to be carrying a gun or if even if you're not carrying a gun you know this resource is there for you the people who uh should be using this are you know families right that want to defend you know have their kids be defended and you know kids that are being bullied in school can use some of this i mean there's a never-ending uh, facet of people who can benefit from uh, the self-defense college and it's and it's really great information you know uh, almost a thousand videos on here again both defensive you know with block and escapes um, you know edged weapons uh, upper and lower strike pressure points choke locks and more um, you know this is really great information but Chris I understand that you guys also have a program that uh, if somebody wants to start teaching this stuff they can actually start teaching this and holding classes without previous experience. Is that correct? Absolutely. So the training is modeled after the law enforcement principle of everyone starts together and finishes together. You don't need any experience. Uh, some of our most successful owners have no martial art experience at all. They're, they're a, a, a clean slate. Uh, we have a lot of guys and girls and, and owners that make six figures easily. I, you know, it's not you don't have to open a dojo or, or a karate school. You can we teach me if you go to selfdefensecertified.com, um, selfdefensecertified.com, check it out. And it, you can also get there from the, the, the college site as well. Uh, it allows you be, to be the professional self-defense instructor in your area. We have over 100 locations, uh, I believe 450 uh, active instructors. Uh, and it's just a great way to make a living, getting up and teaching adults and major corporations. And you'll see our corporate client list. It's big. I, we've we taught. MTV, uh, Price Waterhouse, uh, Remax, um, uh, Keller Williams, you name it. So uh, it's it's a it's a great way to actually have you in, have your own business. We we've, we've had a surge in new signups to, uh, as instructors because the, when COVID hit, people were exposed or you know they were they felt out of control. They they go in and they're like they get fired 
you know, we don't have work for you. This allows people to stay engaged. We have the virtual online system for your students as well. Our instructors get to use this and, and allow them to teach through the COVID crisis. If you're sitting at home, you're in quarantine, that's not an excuse. Pop this open and train. Uh, order some manuals, start flipping through the manuals, uh, open the uh, electronic manuals that we send you. So it's a great way to stay plugged in. It's a great business to start and have. Uh, it's a low entry point. You don't need a brick and mortar. We have guys that teach out of banquet halls. We have guys and, and girls that actually own big facilities. Uh, but you're, you, you know, the knowledge is housed right here and wherever you go, there it is. So I might go, I might be flown out to Arizona and speak in front of 400 realtors. All I need is a microphone, some of my demo uh, props and, a, and an audience. And we show you how to do all of that. And the best part about it is there's a, there's a back system. It's a lot of business. So you get your own website, you get all your own marketing material. Uh, and the online college is just kind of a, a start to see what we do. And then if you want to become a, cert a certified instructor, we show you how to do it and how to make a lot of money. Uh, and before we jump off of this, uh, if you guys want, uh, this is a bestseller book I have on, on Amazon, and it goes over a lot of stuff we talked about today, threat assessment, uh, how, to, how to pick a, a, a quality training center, because there's a lot of bad ones out there. Uh, you know, criminal profiling, criminal intent, psychology of self-defense. If you download our app, and if you go to the college, the app's actually right there. You can download it on Apple or Google and you get a free book. There is no catch. We don't want anything from you. There's free audio seminars. You get the free book. Uh, we're passionate about getting this message out there. Uh, and there's a lot of opportunity to get involved, whether it's with the college or the certified site. But selfdefensecollege.com or you can order the hard copy off of Amazon. But it's a great resource for you and your family. Awesome. Hey, guys, I really appreciate you joining today. It's been great coverage. Um, a lot of people are commenting that this was just a fascinating tutorial. Um, I think that we'll probably see you guys again. And, and, and those of you who are at home that uh, that want, you know, more information and want to become either, uh, you know, a self-defense instructor, again, no, no experience necessary, uh, you know, get with these guys. They've got a whole business model that will allow you to start your own self-defense school uh, with hands-on training. And, uh, you know, again, you, you can also also come see me become a firearm trainer on top of that and, and have a very well rounded self defense school but guys I appreciate your time we'll definitely be seeing more of you guys at home use the button below to get uh, more information about this I can't wait uh, to have you guys on again Chris and Mark thank you so much for joining. We appreciate it bye guys.